So networking on Zen server. Now the purpose of this video is to do uh, show you how the networking works on this Zen server, but I'm not going to get into the vSwitch controller. I'm going to do a separate video for that because that's going to be a little bit extensive. Uh, and the vSwitch controller takes this to another level, allowing a virtual network to be created across multiple Zen servers, kind of create virtual switching fabric. So this video is going to be limited to what you can do with a single Zen server with the built-in virtual networking options and networking options on there. And just give you an overview of how the networking works on Zen. All right, so the network settings at the top are the networks available to the Zen servers, the VMs themselves. So that shows up here at the top. At the bottom is the networks available to the Zen machine, the physical layer, and how you have that map. So one of them is storage because that's how it attaches to the storage drive. And we're, I'll show you these real quick. One's a storage network. This connects to the storage sides, the iSCSI in this case on the FreeNAS box. And this is the management interface. I could make these both attached to the physical, uh, what I call the dot, two NIC because it's on a, dot, a network that ends in dot two and a dot three NIC so you can control this and if you had more network interfaces you'll have more options in here. But this is only affects the Zen server in the physical layer of the Zen hardware and these network settings do not reflect the network settings for the virtual machines. Matter of fact the virtual machines you don't assign the network settings here you just create the available networks for them. So I've got this one called Tom's LAN of Zen and I'll show you how I created that. You can see the properties of it and this LAN only exists on this Zen 2 server. And I spelled server wrong, let me fix that. Nice thing is, even though I've had this assigned because of the way it uses UUIDs on the underlying, whatever fun creative name I come up with for the Zen server uh, land that I created, it automatically will fix all the virtual machines it's attached to and my typo will be fixed. Now, this is where the NIC options come when you set these up. Internal means phantom internal NIC, as in it doesn't physically exist, but it does exist between the virtual machines. So here's that internal NIC, and automatically add this network to new virtual machines. I don't want it automatically added. You can, that's just a preference. So when you create a machine, it just automatically gets added. You can always change it later, and I'll show you how that works. Now, when we want to add another network, we can even say a uh, single server private network, create a network that does not leave your Zen server. That's why I did to create this. And I'll show you, we'll create another one. Second, uh, <laughs> can't type today. Uh, virtual network, VNet, and add a description, audit, same thing, and it's done. We've created a second one. Don't really need a second one for purposes of this, so we'll go ahead and remove it. Now, a couple of quick options just to show you what else is in here. External network, you can create a new network and we'll call this VLAN 2 because you can create attached to one of the physical network cards but then give it a VLAN ID of another one. That way you could create across your switching fabric a specific route to a virtual machine only across of another VLAN. So those are the other options that you do have in here uh, is to use the VLAN options. We're not going to do that today but it, it's pretty straightforward. If you know how to use VLANs you just create one and then it creates a NIC for a specific virtual machine VLAN so that way it attaches directly to that for other advanced use. Another option in here is bonded network. So if you have a couple uh, network cards in here and you want to bond it, you can create this. Check the boxes. I'm not going to do it right now because it'll screw some things up. Uh, but you could set this up to be bonded and then create what is a single network to the virtual machine, but it's actually a multiple of bonded networks here. But back to the virtual private one. So this LAN only exists on this Zen server too. Tom's LAN of Zen. And how we attach it to the virtual machines is really simple. Go over here. I got them started up. And I'm in networking right here. So we're going to go to properties. And you can see it's attached to the dot three network. Like that. But before I go there, let me show you what the IP address is. So we have 192.168.3.4. 148 because there's a DHCP server on the dot three network as I call it and that's the address they gave. So without restarting the virtual machine you can do this on the fly because the way it works it's not changing out the network card so it doesn't have to do anything to the virtual machine. It's kind of like changing where it's plugged in into the server. So we're going to go ahead and go to properties. We're going to go to Tom's LAN of Zen. It's going to take a second. Go back over to the console. 
and now we have another network address, 192.168.1. Probably asking how you got there. No problem. My usual answer, I spun up PFSense and gave it two network cards. The first network card pulls from the dot three network, hence why the PFSense, which was XN0, XN0 is the first network card, network card zero. Network card one, Tom's LAN of Zen, going to council here, XN1, that's how FreeNAS names them inside of here, is assigned this address and has DHCP running. So it's a standard PFSense, nothing special, loaded on here. Actually, I didn't, you know, uh, it does have something I've seen when it's pulling up that it seems to detect it's on Zen. I named it Zen PFSense. But now I have all the functionality of PFSense to put in front of any servers that I attach to this network. So they have full access to the PFSense, and this network only exists on here. So if you want to create your own testing environments and things like that, so you create your own PFSense and then create a series of virtual machines that you want to set behind PFSense as a firewall, and I'm just using this example, you can really load any firewall you want uh, that would run in here, but it's that easy to do that. And the same thing works for Windows 10, so I'll show you what IP address it has now. So this is also on the dot three network. So this is my Windows 10 box. Go to here, networking. You see it's on the dot three network. And go here, properties, Tom's LAN of Zen. Hit OK. It's going to take a second. And it's got a new address. It's now on 192.168.11 uh, network 100, and it's assigned. And of course, because this is on PFSense, I can even log into it if I want the PFSense box now because I'm on the inside of that network, and I have all the controls. Now, this is really good if you want to do testing, and let's say you want to you create a virtual network, you want to create a virtual machine, you want to uh, do all the full monitoring in PFSense and have it on a nice, quiet network with only one thing attached for monitoring. Easy way to do it. Now, the other cool thing about the way this works is you can create more than one. You can actually create a series of networks on here and go as deep as you want to go. You could actually layer this in different layers because you create one and have it pass through to another one and pass through another one. There's not, I mean, there's probably some limit to how many virtual networks you can create in here, but if I wanted to add another private network, it's as easy as going here and adding another one and you can then tie them together using PFSense. So I create a series of virtual LANs and then tie it to PFSense and give it multiple ne network interfaces so I can actually have multiple private server networks on one physical machine without adding a bunch of network cards. So it's really great for a lab environment where you want to do a lot of testing and lock things down and put things behind their own firewalls and work them that way. So pretty cool system for doing this. It's really not that difficult. I like the way it handles the networking. Pretty straightforward to do. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to do a deeper video on the whole Zen uh, vSwitch system, which is a virtual machine you load into Zen that allows you to create these private networks across multiple Zen servers. And then you can actually create the private network on one Zen server, attach the other devices across another one, and you get a lot of features for that. So if you want to build a larger lab environment with virtual sw switching, um, that's something you could do on there. It's pretty novel. Um, I haven't tried it yet. It's something I play with. I don't have a good use case for it at the moment. None of my clients, my clients who are running Zen server, are just running Zen server, not running multiple Zen servers at the moment. But uh, I'm going to be building multiple ones here just so I can do all this testing and uh, set up, finish my lab environment and some stuff I'm working on here for some more videos. So if you like the count in here, like and subscribe. If you have uh, other questions or suggestions for my Zen server videos, uh, let me know. I know someone asked about a hardware video. I will be doing one of those and talking about some of the hardware for it, but um, hopefully that is helpful on the networking. And once again, thanks for watching.